Hello cybersecurity professionals, welcome to AV Cyberactive. In today's video, I'm going to explain the uh, various protocols used by emails or email clients. That is IMAP, SMTP, and POP3. Each of them has a very specific function and mechanism. Let's go ahead and study. Beginning with the abbreviation for all three of them. SMTP, it stands for Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. POP3, the three, the number three over here is the version. So that's Post Office Protocol version three. IMAP, that's Internet Message Access Protocol. Now let's try to understand how each of these protocols work at a very high level. However, even before we begin, uh, why are we even uh, using these email protocols. So what's an email protocol? An email protocol is a group of rules which ensure that emails are properly transmitted over the internet. So basically thanks to them that we are able to send and receive emails from different machines and networks and operating systems. Beginning with the first one, that is SMTP and how it works. To give you a visual demonstration, so we have our SMTP client, SMTP server, and and both of your file systems. Now, when the user uses its own file system to send emails, the SMTP client, which is your Firefox Thunderbird or your Microsoft Outlook, collects all that information and sends and pushes it over to an SMTP server. Now remember that SMTP works over port 25 that is unsecured and it is used only for sending emails. The SMTP server then acknowledges the receipt of the email and then commands back and forth and sends replies to the emails that it has received from a different file system. So that's how it works. Next one, that is POP3 or Post Office Protocol version 3. How does it work? The POP3 email protocol provides access to your inbox stored in an email server. It executes the download and delete operations for messages as well. Thus, when a POP3 client connects to an email server, it retrieves all the messages from the mailbox then it stores them in your local computer and deletes it from the remote server when the download is complete. And also thanks to this protocol, you're able to access your messages locally in an offline mode as well. For example, your Outlook Exchange server. And the last one and pretty important protocol that is IMAP. The IMAP protocol allows you to access and manage your emails on the email server itself. This protocol allows you to either manipulate folders, permanently delete, or efficiently search through the messages. Keep in mind, and this is kind of very important over here, that by default, all your messages remain on the server until the user specifically deletes them. Keep a quick review before we understand the differences between the three protocols that remember that IMAP and POP3 protocols are designed to receive emails and only SMTP is designed or used to send emails. Hope that was clear. Now, keeping in mind the, all the three protocols, of course, are, are not similar and there are some differences as well, which I'll try to explain in a tabular form. Beginning with the IMAP protocol, the definition, of course, it stands for Internet Message Access Protocol. IMAP was originally developed in 1986 at Stanford University. POP3 protocol, it's post office protocol. It's also a type of email protocol and it's different from IMAP. It was devised for offline reading. And SMTP, it's a standard protocol. Remember this, sending emails via internet. It's a connection oriented and text based protocol. Function, as explained before, IMAP and POP3 are for retrieving emails, for downloading emails, and SMTP specifically is designed for sending emails. IMAP and POP3 ports that you use that typically are 143 for IMAP, 993, which is the secure version. POP3, it's 110, and the secure version is 995. SMTP, the unsecured version, it's 25. Of course, there's some limitation on each protocol as well. So for IMAP, the mailbox on the server has quite a definite quota, and thus one needs to ensure that the mailbox retains space for newer emails. For POP3, 
once the message gets downloaded on your local computer, it remains accessible to your computer even offline. SMTP, as you already know, it is used for sending emails, so it has no way of verifying the sender. This sometimes leads to even spam issues as well. However, you can apply SPF or DKIM security controls on your exchange server so that you can mitigate this type of attack. Now, that was a very brief explanation of the differences between SMTP, POP3, and IMAP uh, email protocols. Let me know in the comments if you want me to cover more topics or any of the topics here in, in detail. Also, if you'd be so inclined, you can connect with me on the email address that I've linked below uh, if you're for any kind of cybersecurity consultation and training. I also give SIEM related exclusive trainings as well. I uh, thank you all for watching this video. Please share this video with your family and friends whom you would think would benefit by watching this. I hope you all have a lovely day ahead. Bye now.